the World Cup champions of 1999. What a victory for the Sri Lankans. A fantastic Hello to all of you on another exciting episode of Match Point by Dr. Adnan. Lot of exciting cricket news as we are approaching towards the end of the year. We are in December 2018. Almost time to say goodbye and we are having lot of exciting news including the Boxing Day Test news. So first of all, the biggest headline of the today's Match Point that Pakistan will host the next Asia Cup cricket tournament coming in 2019 September and this is the biggest news for the Pakistani fans that Pakistan will be finally hosting the tournament after nearly a decade. Australia and Team India they are playing some wonderful and exciting series and we are heading towards the big one the Boxing Day and the Pakistan South Africa they are also heading towards the big one the Boxing Day but first of all the big headline towards the Australia India the big news that Australia India series have been leveled 1-1 Australia coming back from behind beat team India in a style and now the series has been leveled 1-1 and they are geared up for the boxing day the Tim Payne and Virat Kohli the angry captain from India and the Tim Payne the new captain after the Steven Smith both will take charge in this boxing day the next news is from the Pakistan Super League PSL. The Multan Consortium led by Ali Tareen has won the franchise rights for the Pakistan Super League 6 team. 6 team as I told you have to be announced for the Pakistan Super League as Multan Sultan has been withdrawn because of the defaulter issues and lot of other problems going inside with the PCB and the Multan Sultan so the new franchise has been finally declared and this has been taken by the Ali Tareen who is a son of Jangir Tareen who is a main member of the PTI, the ruling party Pakistan Tariqe Insaf. So something in the headline about the six team Multan Consortium is as follows. Ali Khan Tareen is the director operations. Alam Gir Tareen will be the franchise owner who is also operating the Pepsi in the Southern Punjab area. Lot of people are knowing and he is having the largest shareholder in this franchise. And last but not the least, Taimur Malik, an international lawyer who is based in Dubai. He is also a part of this league and he is also a part of this franchise. The other headline with me is the ICC dispute panel has been determined, has determined some bad news for the Pakistan Cricket Board that Pakistan Cricket Board has been penalized some of the money which they are owing and have to give to the BCCI and they have claimed the cost and the administrative cost and the expenses of the panel and according to the verdict 1.2 million US dollar they will have to pay and if I'm not wrong 1 crore 60 lakh rupees they will have to pay they are approximately 9 crore 50 lakh pounds in the Great Britain uh, currency if we go which they have to pay. Something other regarding the Pakistan Super League, the other news, the PSL as we are discussing the Pakistan Super League, Dean Jones, the winning team think tank from the Islamabad United, he says that this is the success of Islamabad United that 6 out of 5 emerging players they have played 
who have played from Islamabad United, they finally played for Pakistan team, Pakistan cricket team, and finally they got the cap. So this shows the worth of the Pakistan Super League. So it means the system is working. The next headline news, not a good news for the South African point of view, but might be the happy from the Pakistan and who are following the news as Pakistan is going to uh, see South Africa in their den and Pakistan's track record is always not very good on these very grounds but at least a sigh of relief that they have to see Dale Stein but they will not have to see Veron Flander because Veron Flanders has broken his thumb so it means he is out of the first match I am not sure he will be fit for the second and the third match or not but Flander because of the broken thumb is finally out of the scenario and he will be not playing against Pakistan on the Centurion on December 26 on the Boxing Day Test. Something from the Pakistan camp, Sir Faraz Ahmed, the Pakistan skipper, he has said that conditions in the South Africa are very tough with the bouncy track and with the seeming conditions and I think that Sir Faraz Ahmed has already given the verdict and all uh, already in the other terms he is giving the verdict that don't expect something too much from the Pakistan team and this is not a good sign as he has told in other words in the body language Safra's body language is on the back foot he has told that we will try to play without fear but I have told my boys to play without fear but South Africa has always a very tough ground and not a happy hunting ground for Pakistan Another big news from the New Zealand camp, the Kane Williamson, the winning skipper who has beaten Pakistan and uh, put New Zealand on the history table after 1969. Kane Williamson became the first ever New Zealand batsman to break the 900 point barrier in the ICC test batting rankings. Williamson, as you all uh, uh, all of you are knowing, by scoring 89-139 in Abu Dhabi and he has earned the 37 points in the latest cricket ranking and have moved to the second highest point and the highest position in the career high with 913 points. 913 points, would you believe? But still, he is not number one because at the number one there is someone who can bat in the desert what I say the Indian Mysterio and the Indian skipper Virat Kohli he is at the 920 points he is leading the table and the Kane Williamson on the 913 on the second and the dejected Australian captain Stephen Smith with 901 points he is having the third slot so this is the first time since 2008 when three or more batsmen are scoring the 900 points on the ICC batsman table and the ICC test batting rankings. Last time it was the decade ago in January 2008 when four batsmen hit the magic mark of 900 points. Kumar Sangakara with 933 career high and the Jack Squalis of South Africa with 920 points while Ricky Ponting, the Australian skipper with 901 and the Mike Hussey lagging behind at the 900. So this is the first ever time when any one of the Kiwis hitting the 900 mark and hitting the points table with the 900 with the ICC test betting rankings. So we will jump right now to the Big Bash League as we have told you uh, uh, the last time about the Big Bash betting toss something uh, strange we have seen something new we have seen which Big Bash has introduced and now when you will be watching this show the Big Bash League will be on Big Bash League two Usmans will be playing from the in the Big Bash and both the Usmans will be from the Pakistan one is Usman Khan Shinwari and one is Usman Kader Usman Khan Shinwari who has got the cap from the Pakistan and he is already playing from the Pakistan side and the other one is uh, might be not someone known to you but his father will be very known to you Pakistani magician Abdul Qadir his son 
Usman Qadir will be a part of this Big Bash League. He is already in Australia, having claimed for the Australian series. And Pakistani Nijad, Australian hai. Australia ki jaane se khelte hai. Not gone for the cap, but he will be the part of the Big Bash League. He was in Pakistan, but then he wanted to try his luck for Australia as a uh, lot of other like. Uh, South African Imran Tahir is over there. Lot of other guys are over there. Muin Ali is uh, in the England team. So Osman Qadir, the legendary uh, leg spinner son, will be a part of this Big Bash League. New Zealand. We will go to the New Zealand again in the headlines now. After the Kane Williams son, another news I want to give you regarding the Tom Latham. the explosive opener of the kiwis he has broken the test record the highest score 264 not out he has made by any player in the cricketing history 264 not out by carrying a bat coming to open the team innings and then carrying a bat this is the highest record until today's date any batsman has made in the history of cricket so now he has made the previous record and he has passed the previous record of lester cook of 244 not out at the melbourne which he has made this year at 2017 18 highest individual scores for the players who have carried the bat i want to tell you tom latham versus sri lanka 264 not out in the wellington 2018 244 not out lester cook versus australia at the mcg in the 2017 in the ashes series and then the glen turner 223 not out back in the kingston in the west indies in 1972 and the marvan ataputu in the list on the number 4 216 not out carrying the bat versus zimbabwe in the 1999 in their den in zimbabwe in bolawayo and brendan mccallum We will jump from Ken Williamson, from Tom Latham to the next Kiwi, who is Brendan McCallum, Bas McCallum, who was the part of the Lahore Calendar, who was the part of the IPL. Something uh, strange fact I want to tell you about the Brendan McCallum, and that is regarding this Kiwi skipper, one of the strongest men who you can see in the Kiwis and you can see in the New Zealand team. So Brendan McCallum, he has lit up the IPL. with his 158 not out in the tournament that was the first ever match in the 2008 and a very surprising fact that he has gone unsold now in the IPL 2019 auction this is cricket and this is what we say up and down once the biggest strongest trump card in the IPL and the highest run getter and now he has not got the space neither in the Pakistan Super League neither in the IPL and what i have to tell you before starting the show at the end of the headline then 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 killer factor so it's the time of the killer factor so something about tom latham i was telling you about his double hundred about his carrying his bat but this is not the killer factor because you are knowing that he is not one who has carried his bat lot of people has done it for i have told you in this show and i have told you the atapatu was the last one in this show latham is the at the highest mark alistair cook has done recently in the melbourne in the ashes against the greatest rivals the aussies the australian team team but this is not the killer factor that 264 has been made but something special in the killer factor that is something 264 the score 264 has never been made by any cricketer so far in over one century of the international cricket this score of 264 has been made first time ever in the international cricket so at the end of the killer factor one thing more as i will tell you at a super topping that also one more digit near to the 264 that has been never scored by any batsman and that score is 265 264 and 265 has never been made by any batting mysterio in the cricketing history so this was killer factor i hope you would have liked it so i will take a short break when i will come back from the break I have to jump back to the what 
India versus Australia, the test match which Australia was looking to beat India to level the series to make and to go for a thriller of the Boxing Day. So the series has been 1-1 as I have told and we will head towards the India versus Australia. We will take a short break and we will come back. We will write, start from here. Welcome back after the break and we were discussing India versus Australia, a cracker of a series when India is playing the away series and this is the best time I told you in the previous games that India can beat Australia in their den. This is the weakest Australian opponent in the last two to three decades, believe me. And this match, the second match after the Indian victory, this match was going to happen at the Perth. But the interesting stuff was this, that this match was not at Perth. This match was not played at the Woka. Woka cricket ground, which has been said to be the paradise of the fast bowler. The fastest ever wicket of the cricket. The fastest cricket ground and the Perth wicket along with the Brisbane Gaba, Headingley leads. These are the tracks which are the paradise of the fast bowlers. And I think here the core myth of the match was there when Indian team was deceived. How they were deceived, I will tell you in the match point. So this match was at the Perth which is the paradise of the fast bowlers. Just like the other wickets, Brisbane, Gaba, Perth, Walker, Headingley, Leeds, which are the paradise. And I think this was the point where Team India was deceived this time by the Team Australia. For the lot of you who are following the match and who were seeing this match, they should have known that here Team India was deceived. They were never imagining that the first wicket of Woka and this wicket of the Optus Perth are the two different pitches. For you who are who want to know what is Optus, so this was not the Woka Perth pitch, this was the Optus Stadium pitch and Optus Stadium, this is also at the Perth and this is the second ground which has been staged for the Team Australia and the international cricket along with the Perth Woka. So this was the cricket's 117, I mean 117th ground of the cricket. And this is the second one in the Perth after the Woka. And overall, this was the ground number 117 for cricket. And Perth now becomes the second city in the Australia after Brisbane to host the test on the two different grounds. When after the Brisbane Gaba, now Perth has got this opportunity. Australia winning the toss and decided to bat fast on this tricky track where India has seen the wicket. Virat Kohli has seen the wicket along with the Ravi Shastri and all the management and they thought, they saw the little grass. Little grass was left on the ground, on the pitch and Team India was deceived. Under that small grass, there were the rough patches. There was the plain ground which was helping the spin and India was spun by Nathan Law in this time because Australia wanted to come back in the home series. Australia winning the toss decided to bat but before the toss I just want to tell you as I told you in the last show that the Virat Kohli's record in the test matches when he is winning the tosses. So once again I just want to repeat you that Virat Kohli is always on the happy side when he is winning the toss. His winning percentage is very good after winning the toss. And this was the time when the things went away and things went, went away from Virat Kohli. If I want to tell you, you will not be surprised. His toss record is by winning the toss, he played 20 matches, 17 wins in the, those games and zero losses. He never lost after winning the toss. Three games he tied after winning the toss. While in losing the toss, this was the match number 24. And overall record of Virat Kohli was, he won eight games and he lost nine games. And while drawing the six games overall. So Australia, after winning the toss, they decided to bat fast. 
So Virat Kohli's opposition's India was put to ball and Australia was ready to bat. Brilliant opening partnership as expected from the skipper Harris and Finch putting on 70 and 50 runs for the first wicket and then in the middle order Travis Head and the captain's rock of Tim Payne stabilizing the innings with 58 and 38 down the order and making a valuable partnership and total of 326 runs were made by Australia in the first innings. Four wickets were for the Ishant Sharma while two each for the Bhumra, Jadev and Vihari. India then started batting and India started chasing the match. So while chasing, openers went out cheaply and couldn't provide a solid partnership to the India. Rahul and Vijay respectively making two runs and then zero runs and got themselves out. The most amazing thing about the Indian batting lineup is when the openers are failing, the one down their batting Mysterio and then in the middle orders, they are taking control of the match. They are taking control of the opposition and this remained the same in this very match. Captain of the game, captain of the team India and masters of the masters, Virat Kohli came into the action. On this very ground, he was playing the match for the very first time just like as any other Australian batsman. The most toughest batsman for the opposition even in their home and his uh, away, away game, Virat, according to his standards, uh, just kept his name alive for what he has meant to be Virat Kohli. He put a captain's knock of 123 and what a brilliant knock we have seen, what a brilliant and amazing cover drives we have seen and the most amazing thing for the Virat Kohli which I have seen, every 100 he plays, his brilliance is coming with a new pace, with a new shear, every time he plays the innings, every time we are seeing the new variety and his new confidence, new enigma and new energy and new zeal and zest. And this 100 even appeared to me better and better even expected to the last time when he fought for the previous one. This was seen, this seemed to me the better one than the past one. 160 in the Cape Town, 149 in the Birmingham and 123 in the Perth Optus. And the innings batsmen play once in their lifetime and he has done these innings alone in 2018 in one single year in almost seven months. Centuries by the Indian batsmen in the test versus Australia, South Africa and England. From December 2011 onwards, if I take as a standard date, Virat Kohli has 10 centuries and all other Indians are having combined uh, 10 centuries. Virat Kohli now only the third batsman to score the 1000 runs in away test in the calendar year. Virat Kohli is, if I compare Virat Kohli with the Indian legends, the previous one, Mohinder Amarnath has done this with a, making the 1000 runs in the calendar year and he has done in the magic year of 1983 when he was the man of the match for the Team India and the Kapil Dev World Cup winning Team India when he compiled up 1065 runs in 1983 and now and then the Rahul Dravid making 1137 runs in 2002 and this is now Virat Kohli who has done this in less than 8 months would you believe and when I am talking about the hundreds and the Virat Kohli's hundred so I will discuss some of the other hundreds also by the Indians. So we will go towards our trivia factor quickly that a hundreds, the very first hundred, as I took the name of Mohinder Amarnath in 1983, 1000 runs in the calendar years and then Rahul Dravid in the 2002. So similarly, I just remember my trivia factor that Mohinder Amarnath's father, who was one of the pioneer of the Indian cricket team, the early the birds coming to the Indian team, he was Lala Amarnath, the first century, first ever made by the Indian man, he was Lala Amarnath. As just for the reminder, I may tell you that the first ever century made by the Pakistani was Nazal Muhammad, 
द फादर ऑफ मुदसर नज़र एंड दिस वेरी सेंचुरी बाय लाला अमरनाथ दिस वॉज द वेरी फर्स्ट बाय द इंडियन मैन एंड दैट वॉज इन नाइनटीन थर्टी थ्री ही मेड वन वन एट वर्सेज इंग्लैंड एंड दैट टाइम द ग्राउंड वॉज बॉम्बे जिम खाना एट दैट टाइम एंड नाउ एटी फाइव ईयर्स लेटर नाउ फाइव हंड्रेड एंड थर्ड टेस्ट हंड्रेड टेस्ट हंड्रेड हैज़ बीन मेड बाय द इंडियन विराट कोहली ऑन सिक्सटीन ऑफ दिसंबर ट्वेंटी एटीन वन ट्वेंटी थ्री वर्सेज ऑस्ट्रेलिया एट द ऑप्टर स्टेडियम पर्थ नॉट द वॉकर स्टेडियम एंड द ईयर इज ऑबियसली ट्वेंटी एटीन पीटर हैंड्स कॉम कैच ऑफ द विराट कोहली वॉज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट कैच ऑफ द मैच एंड दैट वॉज द वे टू गेट रेड ऑफ दिस मैच If you want to get rid of Virat Kohli, you have to be extraordinary, fantastic on the ground with the fielding or extra clever with the bowling. So this catch of Virat Kohli, when he took the Virat Kohli, this catch was almost identical catch where Saurav Ganguly got out of Michael Clark's he uh, of the bowling of the Bradley and when Michael Clark took the catch of Saurav Ganguly. So this was reminding me of that catch of the Sydney Test back in January 2008. about 10 years ago anyhow the fantastic catch and that was the end of the virat kohli otherwise he uh, could have uh, taken uh, the more lead india could have taken the more lead and then rehane with the 50 and valuable 36 by the pant 5 for lion 2 for hazelwood and star as the catch of the virat kohli when he was taken that was not the very clean catch so this was also the problem also the good catches but the virat kohli's catch was also a dispute because later on the tv screen has showed that might be the virat kohli fingers were underneath the ball so his fingers were touching the ball and it was not sure that whether ball has struck the ground first or not but it seemed to me that the ball has struck little bit of ground might be but anyhow it was the umpire's day umpire's call third umpire decided after seeing the ball closely that virat kohli will have to go back to the pavilion if virat kohli would not have given out india could have taken lead and this could have been lethal for team australia on the last days of the game anyhow later on rehane made the 50 and valuable 36 by the pant and five wickets for lion nathan lion with another fifer two for hazelwood and stark and most fifers versus india in the test if i go seven fifers for the murli dharan and nathan lion now this is a record while the six by the pakistani prime minister imran khan ian botham and malcolm marshall and five fifers with a dale stein and late richie beno rest in peace notable thing if i want to tell you as i told you that murli and nathan lion are the one who have taken the maximum fifers against team india so i want to tell you that murli has done in 22 test but nathan lion has done this against india in only 16 runs let's go ahead india total of 283 oshis Uh, Aussie is getting the valuable lead of 43 runs again the valuable partnership by the openers Harris and Finch once again with 20 and 25 runs Usman Khwaja then came down as the brilliant 72 that was the brilliant knock and the knock of the time which Australia needed one man to anchor and Usman Khwaja said that I am the one who will anchor the Aussies with a brilliant the uh, uh, bowling uh, of the indian bowling he resisted quite a long time in multiple sessions making the valuable 72 in this knock he also got the balls here and there and extra ordinary bowling from the indian pace attack which was reminding us from the pakistani's wos and the pakistani great eras of 70s and 80s when sarfraz nawaz and imran khan and later on Wasim Akram and Wakar Jurus and later on Shoaib Akhtar doing same to the opposition brilliant bowling but he resisted uh, against team India and then Tim Payne again a captain playing a valuable knock down the ground down the middle order again with the 37 valuable runs putting India on the back foot in the bottom six wickets for the Shami and 3 for the bumra and 1 for the ishan so total of 287 runs were given to win the match for the opposition
welcome back after the break so total of 287 runs were given to the team india to win the match and take the lead 2-0 before the boxing test but the it was too tough for the opposition and for the virat kohli's men to do all this so just as a reminder i want to tell you in the show that in the last 10 years if any team has done this on the fourth day or the fifth day of the game that were the swing box those were the south african south africa has did it twice in 2008 about a decade ago 10 years ago this they are the only visiting sides to win the test match while chasing in Australia in the fourth innings and they did it twice once at the Perth Walker with 414 for the four wickets and then doing this in the Melbourne Cricket Ground MCG with 183 for one in both instances winning the game for South Africa and they have done it in the successive test matches about 10 years ago a decade ago so India Team India, if I look upon the Team India, Team India was looking in the disarray with a negative energy. Already we were seeing the glimpse of Ishant Sharma and Jadeja indulging in a fight. We were seeing the fingers, we were seeing the heads tilting down. No one was knowing what's going on. But a very close resources, they are telling that Jadeja uh, was called by Ishant Sharma and Ishant was saying, why you are saying so much? And then Ishant said, don't wave the hand at my face and later on uh, Ishant was very angry and he said I will show it up your blah 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 and he was using some bad words it has been heard that some of the commentators and the pitchmen who were creators who were nearby they have heard that both were very angry and they were fighting in Hindi so this was the negative energy which was already coming and this match was already in the tension as we have seen lot of words between played between the Tim Payne, the wicketkeeper and the skipper and the Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli is a Punjabi skipper, an aggressive skipper. Already we were seeing lot of sledging from both sides. Aussies are meant to be sledgers. Aussies are famous for their sledging throughout the years when cams were not there, latest speakers were not there. Everyone is knowing but this time now everything was caught up on the TV screen and eventually even the television umpire was seen that while they were disturbing the play he has been seen to uh, say to the Tim Payne and to the Virat Kohli that please play the game you are mature and you are adult and you are mature enough to play the game and umpire snubbing both the skippers around the ground when both were playing and especially when the Aussie skipper was batting so lot of sledging and even the obstruction on the field were seen at a very interesting uh, things were seen when uh, Tim Payne was running on the wicket and Virat Kohli was coming in between his way and he was only pushing his chest behind, not his body and then Tim Payne was angry that Virat Kohli is obstructing the field but this was all happening at the Optus Park. Mike Hesse, the Indian uh, Aussie's great, he was saying that Virat Kohli is out of control and I don't like his attitude at the moment. Even the Allen Border has been uh, seen uh, saying in the commentary box and that the captain carry on like this the way Virat Kohli is I'm not liking that but the Viv Richards the West Indies great the man from the Antigua and one of the legends of the cricket he was saying that what Aussies are doing and what they were doing in the 80s and 70s and what Virat Kohli is responding he is doing the right stuff with Aussies so there were different opinions but lot of Aussies they were against the attitude of Virat Kohli India given the target of 287 to win the game and India in the away chases in this year. This is a very critical factor that when India was given the chases in this year, Cape Town target 208, they lost the game. Centurion 287, they lost the game. Edge Beston 194, they lost the game. South Hepaton target 245, they lost the game. Oval, they were given the huge target of 464 by in the Cook stream. In the English by the English team and they lost the game so Perth Optus Stadium target was 287 a big question mark on the Indian betting lineup but still hanging in the Indian fans that why it is not possible when having such giants in the Indian betting lineup so this was the thing to focus and thing to see that why India is unable to chase anyhow India under Virat Kohli I want to tell you has never won the test outside home after fielding first. 
so this was one of the stat which was favoring and stamping the india's defeat before starting the chase they have never successfully chased the target more than 104 in the test match in the fourth innings whenever captained by virat kohli india batting was in clutter openers going cheaply kohli trapped wonderfully by the loin and if i tell you about that ball that was the magic ball reminding us of saklan mushtaq shane warne because uh, tim pain was at that time even he was involved in sledging at that time when kohli was batting vice versa when he was batting kohli was in the slips and he was shouting after he got out uh, of a one nasty delivery and uh, tim pain uh, went out after seeing the slips cordon and same vice versa when virat was batting uh, so uh, it was seen it was caught by the stump microphone once again that he was saying uh, to deceive virat kohli he told uh, nathan loyne to put the ball outside and he was asking him to uh, put the ball towards the offside and uh, away from the virat kohli and virat was ready for that he, his bat was ready mentally to see the ball and to take the ball on the bat like that but what happened with his eye gestures he told nathan loyne to put a straight ball and there the batting mysterio was deceived nathan loyne putting the straight ball it was a flipper it was not moving anywhere and virat played with a tilted bat because he thought from the tim pain behind the stumps that the ball will go towards the off and his bat tilting towards that and immediately going towards the usman khwaja in the first leg and he was ready to take that uh, take that catch and take that vital important catch of the match so virat kohli out and virat kohli when uh, got out means india on the back foot so india uh, when after getting uh, virat kohli out murli vijay came to the bat and murli vijay when came to the bat nathan loyne was ready immediately murli vijay was distracted by the indian by the aussie skipper and tim pain again the microphone uh, caught him saying that i know he is your captain virat kohli is your captain but you can't seriously like him as a bloke and this was the thing murli vijay uh, it was sent to the murli vijay ears murli vijay didn't respond as according to the batsman they usually they don't respond to the bowlers and to the wicket keepers and the very next ball to the nathan loyne he was trapped because he was already distracted distracted from the aussie skipper next ball he was gone only resistance which came that came from rehane and vihari and pent 30 each down the order and india was all out on 140 mitchell stark and nathan loyne three each with a hazelwood and the cummings two wickets each for them and aussies finally winning this match by the 146 runs and the series has been squared and geared up for the big boxing day test most overseas test matches lost in the calendar year by the india here you can see the list that india has lost the numbers the maximum number of overseas defeat which india got that are in 2018 which you can see so i need to close the show but before closing the show we will have to go towards the then 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 killer factor bring the music on so in the killer factor i just want to tell you about the betting mysterio virat kohli virat lost the match india lost the match and it was a very good fighting match between india and australia series has been leveled 1-1 but virat has put the ball out of the ground for the maximum in this game so this six was the only six of the game we are not seeing sixes in the test matches but for the batting mysterio this six is not the ordinary thing but this is not the killer factor so right now there is a time for the killer factor and riley is right next to me to tell us the killer factor of the game yeah so killer factor virat kohli finally hit the six in test between this maximum and previous one in birmingham He battled 1455 consecutive balls without a six. And he is the batsman who once hit 38 in one IPL alone. 
Yeah, wow, yes, Kelly told you that he took 1455 balls to hit this six out of the ground and he was the batsman who once did 38 sixes in the single IPL. So this is the end of the show. Till next time I will come. It will be the start of the Boxing Day Test between Pakistan versus South Africa and Australia versus India. Till then, take care and bye-bye. Yes.